Welcome to the world of the singing ship. We gon' make you sing and you taste for the wind. From the Palmer Road to River to the East Coast, from the East to the East, from George to Georgetown City. I can win me what I want to the hinterlands from the current. Well, hello again. Welcome to the Singing Chef Show. My name is Eon John, the Singing Chef. Today, our special menu is going to be, we're going to do a papa, pumpkin, and pineapple curry. It's almost like a korma. The Indians call it like a korma because I'm going to be using coconut milk with it as well. You know, we've got our garlic, ginger, onions, turmeric, honey. We got, I, I stretch it by, by adding, that's the curry actually, and this is the turmeric, and this is the, some, uh, some hot sauce by umami again. We seem to be using this a lot, the red heat one. So we want to make this thing really spicy. Some cumin there, which is jira crushed, crushed up, and just some apple cider vinegar. It just adds that little bit of to it, right? So all we got to do is just get on with this. This is the quickest thing in the world. I've got my oil here. I've got my oil here. Right, that pan is really nice and hot. Of course, you put your, put the garlic in. Right? Put the ginger in. I know it's gonna seem like this is a strange way to do this, but I usually put the pumpkin in first with that because I want them to all get like this really toasty flavor. Get those working together. And if you wonder what this is, we're just, this is a coconut lime rice and it's got half brown rice, which is very, very good for you. And also hard, half parboiled rice, which is also very, very good for you. You see how this pumpkin is taking on this flavor of just the ginger? This is what we want because that's the main ingredient of this meal. All right, we can let that cook a little bit. I'm gonna do my onions quickly. Right? Right. We don't need to. We just need one onion for this. I just put two in case. I just put it two in case. Now the onions, we have to wait until they get nice and translucent. Oy, 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 oy. Right, now you can see that really cooking up a storm. This is the time I wanna add a little bit more oil, just a little bit more oil. And this is gonna take on, which, what are you talking, this is about four tablespoons of oil that we've got in here. And you see how that's looking nice and creamy? This is what we want. Oh yes. So now we're gonna add our curry mix and the cumin and, and the, uh, the turmeric and the cumin. Now we wanna get this into the oil first. So I'm gonna need, this does take a little bit more oil than usual. So this is about, it's about five or six teaspoons. But you're not gonna taste that. You're gonna see how it's just, just Mixing all this together. Really important that it all gets mixed together. See? Okay. Well, let's, let, that, let that just mix together for a little, well, little bit. Yes, that's gone into the oil now. Let us add the coconut milk. Okay, that's two cups of coconut milk. And we mix all that together. The uh, rice looks like it's drying down, so I think this is time to add all the sweet to this lovely sweet dish. Okay, we're gonna put our, those six tablespoons of honey, it needs a lot of honey. Put in our pineapple, this is the time you do it. 
Because the reason why I add it so late is because I don't want it to just completely dissolve. I want you to taste some of the chunks of the pineapple. It's a lovely, a lovely you know, delight when you bite into it instead of it just being mushy into the sauce. And I know it might be a weird idea about cooking with fruits, but I know a lot of Guyanese cook with mango, right? It's the same thing with cooking with these kind of fruits. And these fruits are all Guyanese too. Let's leave this, let this cook off, and then we'll take a break for our sponsors, and we're gonna come back and do the Tostonis, and hopefully these are gonna be ready by then, and we'll serve up. Lush rice fields of Guyana, straight to your home. Caribbean rice, our people, our rice. Royal chicken, great value and so tasty and delicious. Available at your local supermarket. At Chief, we put more in so you'll get more out of your cooking. Whether it's succulent baked fish or chicken, yummy pizza or creamy pasta, flavorful chow mein or tasty veggie dishes. The chief reason is always taste. Have you heard the news? Now you can prepare mouth-watering Palauri and Bagani for your guests in as little as 5 minutes with the Maid Marion Palauri Quick Mix. It's easy. Just add water, mix, then fry. Mmm, delicious. Now entertaining for any occasion is easy with the Maid Marion Palauri Quick Mix. Another fine product of the Maid Marion range. Available at all leading supermarkets and stores nationwide. Guyana's heart lies with its beautifully exotic inland regions, which are in stark contrast to the hustle and bustle of Georgetown and the coast. Guyana's capital owes much of its distinctive architecture to the colonization of the French, Dutch and then the British. From the impressive town museums to the Grand Cathedral, reputedly the tallest freestanding wooden building in the world, the city's markets are vibrant with the flurry of everyday life and the beautiful botanical gardens offer a tranquil retreat. Guyana is the only country in South America where English is the official language. With a rich diversity of people. And on the coast there's a distinctive Caribbean culture. The country's strong indigenous culture is evident as soon as you travel inland from Georgetown or along the lower Essequibo. Here, Fort Island, home to the Dutch government in the 18th century, is built on one of 365 islands on this vast waterway, the third largest river in South America. The river's remote feel is punctuated by various island resorts with inviting beaches. Deeper into the interior, there are welcoming community lodges where you can explore the rainforest or move south towards the rolling savanna. Here you really get a feel for the wonderful eco-projects that are happening in the country. It also gives you a chance to meet people from the nine indigenous groups who will welcome you to this unique and fascinating culture. Our rice looks like it's getting there, our stew like it's getting here, and that's a good time to do the Tostonis. But first, we're joined here by Brian Mollis, who is the head of Guyanese Tourism... Authority. Authority, there you go. Very good friend of mine, I should know that what, what he actually does. So, the, Brian, what we're doing here is, that is a pumpkin, papaya, and pineapple curry. Oh, it smells delicious. Yeah, um, and it's cooked in kind of like a korma, which is curry powder, which is stretched out with turmeric, and it's got some um, 
with coconut milk. Oh, you're making me hungry. So yeah, yeah. Don't worry, you're gonna taste it earlier oh, great. because we're gonna have you gonna have the market. You can actually tell us about what you actually do because I, it, what you do is really, really interesting and very beneficial for Guyana. All right. You ever made tostones before? I'm not. All right, all right. Well, these are like these half green, um, half ripe, half green. You know, is the grass empty or is it um, is it half empty or is plantains? it half full? Bananas. These are plantains. Sorry. Okay. And um, we just put them in to, these are Cuban inspired. It's actually, it, it, this, is, this is something I learned in Cuba, right? And you That's just put them. Yeah. Oh, right. So you do know what they are. Mm -hmm. You just never made them. No. Okay. That's brilliant. Well, this is real, real easy. All right. Let's it's see. Like a, be a hit with kids too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just don't let them get too close to the oil no, if they're no, too no. young. <laughs> but uh, that's basically what we do. Uh, we can let this we can let this cook off for about five minutes. Take it out, smash them, and then put them back in. That's okay. why you get that wheel flavor. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Brian. <laughs>
and to the community as a whole. The two-day, one-night Wakapo community tour attempts to reveal these ancient heritage and customs to guests, from boat building to making traditional cassava bread with a local expert, to visiting sacred cultural sites where origin stories are shared. The tour also gives guests a chance to experience traditional foods, as well as allow guests to immerse themselves in the natural surroundings the region has to offer. So for further information on this magical journey, please call 695-9065. Chief, we put more in so you'll get more out of your cooking. Whether it's succulent baked fish or chicken, yummy pizza or creamy pasta, flavorful chow mein or tasty veggie dishes, the chief reason is always taste. Welcome to the seven curry tour. The sounds, tastes and smells of food tours are inherently experiential and a well-designed culinary experience can also be educational and participatory. Experiencing new food is a highlight of visiting any new destination and also holds memories connected to the past. The new Georgetown 7 Curry Tour is an immersive culinary experience for both visitors as well as local residents that exposes guests to the entire process of preparing 7 Curry. The meal features seven different curries eaten with rice and other accompaniments such as puri and achar. And the fun part is you get to eat it with your hands. The tour consists of Going to the local water lily area to learn about the origins of Seven Curry and gather your own water lily leaf. Travel to the market to pick up the vegetables and visit the Indy Spice Factory and see the spices being turned into amazing curry powder. See food theatre in action. Tony and his family will show you how they make the best puris. And now to make the Seven Curry, you'll be taught by the singing chef Eon John how to cook the curries in authentic outside setting and finish the day by eating the delicious curries in the charming gazebo. Come and join us. Remember that we're here with Brian Mullers from the Guyana Tourism Authority. Okay, so we've got we've got a lovely uh, coconut lime brown rice with a pumpkin, papaya, and pineapple curry korma. Delicious stuff. We just want his opinion, and it's going with uh, these tostones, which are double fried. They, they are in fried plantains, you cook them first about five minutes and you take them out, smash them and put them back, put them back on, into the plate and you, you drain them, you put them into the plate and it looks like round, um, like wheels. I love it, I like the way it cooks. I mean, I do to do plantains. Anyway, Brian, take it away, have a taste. Oh, it's a pleasure to have the honors to do so. Thank you very much. Eon, this is delicious. Yeah. The papaya, the pineapple and the pumpkin all coming together with the coconuts and Lime, it's, it's delicious. You know, the seasonality of all the fruits here in Guyana 
this is just exemplary of, of the myriad of options that we have in, in the culinary scene. Exactly, but don't you think that this is why people come here? Because when Guyanese come here, in fact, a lot of even expats and people like that to come and they stay here for a while. They taste things like pineapple, they taste things like the coconut water, they taste things like our papa, uh -huh. they, they, you know, I mean, and they just spoiled for choice. That's right, you know, the one thing that we hear at the Guyana Tourism Authority from everyone who comes here, whether they're from international media, tour operators, locals, residents, expats, all around, the one thing that everybody loves about Guyana is the food. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, you just came back from Berlin recently. That's right. So you want to tell me a little bit about, about that, about what happened there in terms of Guyana tourism and yeah, absolutely. You know, I think it was the, the very first time that Guyana was recognized internationally for being a, a stellar, really a truly wow. extraordinary tourism destination. We were acknowledged as the number one ecotourism destination in the world and, and one of the top 10 yeah. sustainable destinations in the world. Yeah. So in terms of the way of what Guyana has to offer, how do you see that that really sort of registers in like the future of like world tourism? You know, like all the things that Guyana have to offer. Well, I tell you, we are, scene, yeah, think, we're so. actually perfectly positioned in country because authenticity is the new currency in, in travel and tourism. And, and it really oh, is authentic. authentic. <laughs> Everything about Guyana is authentic. We're not yes, touristy. We don't have a homogenized exactly. or commoditized tourism product. Right. You're meeting local people, you're supporting local businesses. Yeah. All the things that exemplify sustainability in tourism are happening because it's part of Guyanese cultural heritage. So you mix that with the abundance of biodiversity that we have, the wildlife, the, yeah. the flora, fauna, et cetera, and, and the culture, the six peoples living in harmony and our mm -hmm. nine Amero-Indian groups. And you really get that, that, that essence of what people want with their travel experiences in, in this day and age. And top it off with stellar cuisine and it, it, it makes for the, the trip of a, of a lifetime. And that's why I think that increasingly Guyana is getting on that global stage and, and having its, its, finally, its time in the limelight. Do you know, I, I just gotta ask you about this because recently you met up with you and your family yeah. up in, <laughs> in, in the Pomeroon. That's right. It was super fun. <laughs> oh man, that was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, one of the highlights of our, our, our time really here so far. I couldn't believe how beautiful this is. Yeah. And when I call my family or you know, come back from this, <laughs> these kind of, well, not vacations, we go there quite often now. Yeah. Uh, people, even loads of Guyanese don't even know that exists, right? But a lot of people actually come to this country and they go up there, and now it's becoming mm -hmm. increasingly popular. I've, I've seen right. over the years more and more Guyanese are going up there. Mm -hmm. uh, not just the Pomeru, but you're talking about just the, the, the all, all around the Nuni, all these different places. That's right. And it's, it's very important to sell tourism, don't you think, for the local people that want to stay away for a weekend, <laughs> as it is for the international people that want to come here. That's right, you know, we always say that we specialize in adventure, nature, culture, in, in abundance, in all those three areas, and it's a perfect complement to our neighboring countries that generally specialize in sun, sand, and sea types of, of experiences. And while, you know, we're increasingly trying to create packages and tour offerings to get our residents out so that they can appreciate more of what we have, because uh, it is expensive to get in at the interior. So we, we ha need to make it more affordable for the average yeah. individual. At the same time, I think many diaspora don't realize that Guyana's safe to visit to. Yeah, there are neighborhoods in Georgetown that you don't want to travel in alone at night and that kind of thing. But by and large, it's an extremely safe destination and yes, a majority the of, of the country. Yeah. And you have these uh, world-class experiences that you can't have anywhere else in the exactly. world. Where can you go to a national park like Kaichuru, which is four times larger than Niagara, multi-times larger than Victoria Falls, and have it to yourself or with a small group or travel for up to a day and not see any sign or very little sign of human life or have a meaningful interac interaction with indigenous peoples without the need for an interpreter. We offer those types of experiences and again, people are seeking those out and that's what makes it special not only for domestic and diaspora, but for the international traveler seeking out nature and adventure culture as well. Yeah, well, we, we both know and agree that Guyana is incredibly special. Uh, 
We'd like to thank Brian Moss and Morris for coming along. I'm going to let you finish your food. And uh, we'd like to thank, <laughs> thank you. the NCN and, of course, our sponsors. And definitely you guys for tuning in. And please tune in tomorrow for another Singing Chef Adventure. Firing Adventure. Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Diana. The singing ship, we gon' make you sing and you taste for the rain. From the Pomeroon River to the East Coast, from East to the East.